Hello and welcome. This is the Bits vs. Byte podcast. I'm your host, Amin Grieg, and today with me is Niels van Buren. He is uh, one of the founders for Swink. That's correct. Yes. <laughs> welcome, Niels. Uh, let's start off a little bit about uh, your background, but also how you got to start Swink. Yeah, so um, my background's not the typical uh, entrepreneur background because I was a banker for about 15 years. Um, and after been working in sales, marketing, management uh, jobs, I eventually decided to become an entrepreneur and join my current business partner in uh, the company that's called Swink. And Swink is an uh, old English verb that means hard, to work very hard and to... Uh, oh, really? I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not used uh, <laughs> a lot anymore, I think. Uh, but to old swink, English. actually, yeah, <laughs> very, very old English. And to swink means to, to work very hard. Um, but five years ago, I joined him and became a business partner and... Uh, I knew my business partner, who was called Paul, from uh, my period at uh, at uh, ING, where I worked as a banker and I financed uh, the company, and eventually ended up, uh, you know, entrepreneuring uh, together oh, and, cool. uh, and growing the business. Yeah. So, uh, what do you try to provide as Swink? Yeah, Swink is a, is a social enterprise. Uh, uh, I think our, our primary goal and what we try to achieve is to employ as many people with autism as possible because we found out that about 54% of the uh, people with autism are unemployed. Uh, while the unemployment rate in the Netherlands is currently about 3% or a little bit lower. And 54% of the uh, people with autism are unemployed. So we thought this is crazy and yeah. we have to do something about that. It's almost 20 times more. That's, that's it's crazy. crazy, yeah. And, um, and we found out that uh, people with autism are uh, very talented and have very unique talents uh, that you can use or unleash to do very cool things as an agency. So uh, we work as an online marketing agency and a data analytics agency, and we provide services such as online marketing, SEO, search engine advertising, uh, but also uh, creating uh, interesting content. Um, and then, uh, next to that, uh, doing a lot of analytics. We started off with web analytics, uh, but now doing stuff like Power BI, consultancy, okay. and data visualization. Uh, so, but in fact, what we do is we unleash the unique talents of, of people with autism. Uh, so we have a very social goal, but also a commercial goal in growing the company and providing extremely uh, good services to companies such as banks, uh, municipalities, hospitals, um, you know, all kinds of uh, large corporates. Mm -hmm. And uh, how many people do work at your company at the moment? So we currently employ about 20 people. Mm -hmm. um, and we the company exists for almost a little bit more than 10 years. Okay. And the first five years were um, my business partner, you know, really tried to invent how does this work? You know, how do you create a social enterprise? Yeah. And, and social enterprises, you know, that didn't really exist at that time. And so there was a lot of experimenting and, and how do you employ people with the distance to the labor market because there are some difficulties, of course, that you encounter uh, employing uh, people in that time that were blind or uh, were deaf, autism. And eventually, after five years, when I joined, we decided to focus fully on on autism mm -hmm. and then we st started to build, attract more customers, make the company profitable. Um, and now we're into the next stage to to scale the company and to create more impact, uh, uh, create more jobs, and to also inspire other companies and other people to to follow our lead because we're not going to solve this problem of unemployment in our on our own. Uh, we need uh, a lot of people to follow our example. We need big companies to join and to also start employing people with autism. So, w what what would you say are kind of the unique talents that someone with autism has uh, uh, apart from uh, having autism? It's it, that's that's not uh, the well. That's a big difference, of course. But that that's that's not one of the talents, of course. The talents are uh, basically in the work that they can do and that they can do better, maybe even than someone that's quote-unquote healthy in that sense yeah yeah so um 
you know, people with autism are also healthy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, um, but what I would say there there are some you know, unique talents, so, yeah. uh, such as their analytical skills, their extreme eye for detail, uh, their analytical skills, and their ability to focus for long periods of time. Yeah. So these are very generic, um, um, you know, capabilities that you could say about people with autism. And having said that. Each person with autism is also very different. So it's not that all of these people with autism have these same talents, yeah. uh, but just in a generic sense, you can say that you know this happens more with people with autism. Um, and if you compare that to neurotypical people, so people without uh, autism, yeah. um, then you see that there are, these talents are different. And if you combine teams with people, neurotypicals and, uh, and atypicals, uh, that you get, you know, very unique teams that uh, that get better results, uh, communicate better because people with autism, you know, they really start asking questions. Okay, I don't understand what is it that you want and what is the the goal that we're trying to achieve. Mm. Um, and next to that, there are also some difficulties, uh, to be honest, uh, because people with autism. Uh, tend to find it hard to plan or to have a sense of time and to, to know what the deadlines are or uh, overall often a little more um, how do you say the vulnerable for for stress mm. uh, so you have to take care of each other yeah. and make sure that uh, somebody can thrive within a, a unique situation a lot of my colleagues don't like noisy surroundings um so an open office plan is, yeah is, no is not the best not the best solution no and the thing is we do have an open office oh, okay. yeah which uh, surprises a lot of people but um the big difference is that we have a set of rules together and most people with autism like rules you know to make <laughs> it clear um so don't uh, use your phone um, for calling, and uh, you can use it, you know, for WhatsApp or whatever. But uh, not on the in the on the office space. And if you have yeah. to discuss together or have a meeting, not in the office space. And yeah. So just to keep it quiet, and if you have to discuss things, use Skype or chat or whatever functionality to you know to have a quick chat with each other. Yeah. And yeah. this makes a real difference, and it's something that also I think large companies can also learn. Um, because uh, I used to work in open open office spaces uh, in my former in my previous job, yeah, um, and I know that everybody was always distracted and it's always irritating because yep. then the, the <laughs> colleague on the other side is calling and he's very loud voice and laughing and you cannot concentrate. Yeah. So this is not unique, but we have to do something about it because it's you know the impact is so clear. Mm. But if you do, then you know it's really different and it's creates a better surrounding. Uh, wh why do you think uh, a lot of these companies are hesitant to find people with autism and have them employed? Because as you said, the employment rate, the uh, employment rate is very low in yeah. that sense. Uh, why do you think they're hesitant to do it? Is it just that they don't know what it actually is? Or what, what do you think about that? I think there are a couple of reasons. Um, first of all, People with autism find it hard to uh, do job interviews mm. uh, because it's a surrounding they don't know, the people they don't know, uh, they're not very good at it, uh, yeah. most of them. Um, it's very artificial as well. It uh, is, yeah, in, yeah. In that sense. Yeah. And on the other hand, a lot of um, companies and recruiters are not used to talking with people with autism and to to really understand what their talents are yeah. so i have so many examples of uh, within my company uh, that people you know they've been unemployed for a long time but they're so good at their job and that i always start wondering oh, yeah, why is it uh, so impossible to find a job at another company mm. so i think and Microsoft is an interesting example because they've done some uh, pilots and tests uh, employing people with autism because they actually found out we need, we have this uh, war on talent and we need uh, certain uh, capabilities uh, and we know that people with autism possess these capabilities but why don't we have them yeah so and they started looking at their own recruitment process and they found okay we are doing something wrong because our recruitment process is not suited for people with autism and they'll never get through the funnel 
Hmm. Uh, so they decided to change their recruitment process. And simple examples, you know, they not a lot of talking about yourself and what are your strengths and weaknesses. And, <laughs> but typical job interview. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> But ask, just do a case. Just show me what can you do, and this is the this is the task that's uh, at hand, and uh, mm. show me the results. Uh, and they also said, okay, if you have to, if you work here, um, there's a minimum amount of meetings that you have to join. Typically, most people of autism don't like big meetings uh, that are unpredictable. I don't like them either. <laughs> no, probably a lot of people don't, but they, they don't express themselves. Uh, a lot of people don't express that, but I don't yeah. like meetings either. So yeah. I, I can understand where they, I mean, I know where it comes from, of course, with yeah. them. But but for me, it's kind of the same thing, right? Yeah. It's just like, eh, it, it's not the, you're not getting the concrete results out of it that you want yeah. to have. So what I find so refreshing about working with people with autism, autism is that most of them are very honest and direct and, you know, you know directly what the problem is or, mm. um, and they try to be very concrete um, and things that you would, you know, as an uh, employer, would really love, you know, for all your employees yeah. to have. They have and, clear communication in that sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and of course, there are also downsides, but you have to manage this together and to really understand what is it that you need as my employee to be successful and uh, what can I do to to help you out and how can I create surroundings um, that will work for you so how, how does that how does that go so uh, when you are recruiting people for your company and you want to uh, have people that have autism how, how do you how do you find them actually how, how, do, how does that go um, yeah, in the beginning, we really had to uh, to look for them, of course. Um, and now it's different because many people know our company and know the brand, and they know that we work with people with autism. Uh, but also through municipalities, because if you're unemployed, then you're you know registered at the municipality. Yeah, and exactly. in Holland, uh, there's a lot of social welfare, and they try to make sure that you uh, find a job. And so the, the people that do these, the job coaches, uh, they typically n know our company and mm. they find us. But we're also engaged in a lot of autism networks, um, uh, associations, all these d different kind of places where people come together. Mm. Uh, and we try to make sure that we know. And in our... Um, uh, in the job descriptions on our website or what we you know post on social media we always say we're looking for someone with autism mm. and then still a lot of people without autism uh, and try apply. <laughs> apply but uh, <laughs> but then, then you know they haven't read the uh, the job description yeah, yeah. because yeah. you have a mix uh, and what, what I was wondering about what what is that mix like so what's the kind of percentage uh, uh, that you have f with people with autism and uh, versus the people that don't have autism. So our goal is to have seventy percent of the, uh, the employees uh, have to have autism. Mm, okay. Um, and we're currently at that rate. Um, and um, at the moment, the staff, so the the management team is uh, the, everyone in the management team doesn't have autism. Mm -hmm. um, until we meet someone that is capable <laughs> and uh, can uh, can do the job, then yeah. we'll also employ them. Uh, but the goal is to have uh, more than 70% of the personnel. And uh, what I was wondering about, when you look at that kind of uh, ratio between 70% and 30%, um, what, how, does that, uh, how does that go for the people that don't have autism? Do they have to like... Uh, do they have to like get special training or, or something to to uh, deal with situations that they maybe are not familiar with? Yeah. So f um, first of all, CQ, you have to have a, you know an interest in in other people, and I think that's the foremost uh, and most important thing is that you have a you want to understand um, what the other person needs or what they're interested in and what mm. their problems are or not. Uh, next to that, you of course, you have to understand a little bit about autism and the general things. But as I said, no autistic person is the same. Yeah. Uh, so you're better off if you're just curious and really want to try and understand another person. And next to that, you, of course, have to have management capabilities um, and understand that, that you as a manager are only there to make sure that the other person 
uh, can do their job and that they feel happy. Yeah, exactly. Um, so in that sense, you don't need special training uh, in our company. Um, you, you need to, you know, uh, learn about autism in a general sense, but it's a lot of training on the job mm. and and talking to each other. So we engage our employees uh, a lot in uh, in meetings in uh, quarterlies uh, where we talk about okay what do we need what do you need and we put a lot of time and effort in in coaching um so more than uh, regular companies yeah and some of our employees even have a job coach from outside uh, the company uh, so that they can discuss topics that um yeah, that, that they want to talk about in private uh, and not with their manager. Uh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So, what? How does that go with clients, for example? Say, say, for instance, I'm a client uh, from at your company. Yeah. Um, how does that go with the kind of communication and stuff like that? Uh, are they involved in that, or how does it? Yeah, work? yeah, yeah. It's a very good question because this is a question that we often get, and yeah. uh, also when we try to attract new clients. Mm. And by the way, the, the only way that we can grow and create more jobs is attracting more clients. <laughs> so, and there's a lot of people, you know, or parents that come to me and they say, okay, I have a son with autism. I say, yeah, that's okay. Well, it's great. I really want to help. But the first thing you have to do is make sure that we get more clients. And this is not only a commercial uh, th- way of thinking, but it's also really because we, if we have more jo- more work and more uh clients then we create uh, create more jobs so um typically when uh, a customer uh, starts off the, they're introduced to the specialist or uh, the person that they're going to work with um and we also try to engage them also in, uh, in the from the beginning so for instance um we're talking to uh, a bank, uh, the marketing department, the marketing manager, uh, our sales. Let's talk to them. They're interested and they want to know. Then uh, as soon as we, it gets concrete and they know uh, the briefing and what they mm-hmm. want, for instance, they need uh, new content created for their website, and then we'll engage one of our uh, editors uh, and they will join the meeting. And this makes it very easy for our customer because... Uh, you know they're they're just talking to another person and to a specialist and this is our way to take away all the prejudice or the things that they might think and that they're not even aware of that they think of because a lot of people think oh uh, people with autism they find it hard to communicate yeah, exactly or, yeah that's that's uh, kind of the thing that always comes to mind when yeah, people talk about yeah. it yeah so that's why we engage them also in the sales process mm. Um, and I think this really helps because then uh, they see how committed our people are, and uh, and they also often like the fact that there are, are most of our employees just just like to talk about the work and about the work mm. that has to be done. Uh, very engaged, so there's not a lot of chit chat. Um, and they focus, <laughs> focus, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then you know your money is well spent because uh, you know they want to get the job done and exactly. they want to do it 120 percent. Mm. Um, so this is to get back to your question. One of the most important things when you know customers always have the question: uh, How do we communicate? Yeah, can how you, does it work? <laughs> yeah, can you meet the deadline? How does it work? Um, uh, we've made a lot of video material where people with autism they tell about their jobs, how mm-hmm. they work, and uh, engaging them in the whole process uh, really helps. But Compared to other agencies, we always have to go the extra mile, yeah. uh, f- especially in the beginning. But eventually, what I really like is that as soon as we start working and they see the results, we have very happy customers uh, and very committed customers that are in it for the long run because they see how hard um, these specialists work for them yeah. um, and how committed they are and how strong connected they are to, to our customers. Yeah. Uh, and for and to be honest, you know, it's for it also gives our customers a good feeling because they get uh, the best possible result for their money, mm. and they know there's something extra because they've created a job for somebody. Yeah, they're giving back. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So for you know, for, for our employees and for customers, always the result comes first. Sure. But there's always this extra cherry on the cake. Mm. Mm. That's it. that's interesting. So what I was uh, what I was wondering about is that uh, when you 
for example, have these kind of types of client projects, you have communication and stuff like that. Uh, does that also change the people uh, that have autism in your company in the sense that do they get more communicative in that sense or uh, how does that how does that affect them? Uh, uh, yeah, definitely, because I've, I've seen a lot of examples of people that have been working for five to ten years. And if, if I talk to them and if they describe themselves how they were in the beginning and how they are now mm. and what they have learned as an individual uh, and their personal development, uh, I think that's it's amazing to see what happens. And if you just give attention to people and try to understand uh, what do you need to be successful. Yeah. And we had this quarterly meeting just uh, a week ago, and we wanted to know what, what are the things that you find, what are the key values of the company, mm. and what do you des- would you describe? And without exception, uh, everyone described personal development as the, one of the key values. Yeah. So, and this was for me very interesting to see because uh, this means that everybody is in it to to learn and to understand. And um, one example of a colleague. Um, you know, was in the beginning not very communicative and now is, um, you know, handling uh, customer or client accounts uh, alone and going to customers alone. It's and crazy. Yeah. yeah, it's great, but it's also fun. And, yeah, uh, yeah, of course. And, and they like it. Yeah. Uh, customers like it. Um, and customers even give the feedback. They say, okay, I've been working with this person now for so many years. Mm. And I can see the difference beginning and now. And, and they feel connected uh not in a pitiful way but in a, in a strong way you mm-hmm. know it's, it's i think it's cool i've i've, I've added something and, and the customers you know they have learned something uh, as well yeah in a sense it, it it seems to me that we are thinking uh we're thinking too limited in that sense right mm-hmm. so we're thinking in, in limitations instead of possibilities in that in that sense uh, and that that's the most interesting part for me to hear this kind of story is to to see that uh, y- you shouldn't judge someone based on that, right? You yeah. shouldn't say, okay, uh, this person has autism, so uh, uh, for for sure they won't work in a kind of communicative job, right? Yeah. And that's that's just uh, that's just wrong <laughs> in that sense. It is, yeah. yeah but... it, it's too limited in the it's it's way too limited of a, of a world view in that sense. But I didn't know that as well. That's no, and a lot of people. And so this is one of yeah. our big challenges that we have to show the world that there's much more possible. And eventually, this is not only true for people with autism, mm. but, but you know, we as as human beings, we just like to put people in in boxes. And I do that as well. You know, it's just printed in our brain. But yeah. sometimes you just have to force yourself to look at it in a different way and to yeah. see what people can actually do. Yeah. So how, how does that how does that go when you uh, because I can imagine that, for example, having um, harder meetings, as in uh, having to communicate something negative or something like that, how does that go when you're doing dealing with someone that has autism? Is that like totally different than what you would do normally, or how does it go? I would say it's the same. Yeah. Yeah, because um, it's also fair, mm. and because we're not treating someone different because they have autism. Yeah. We only... Because if you do that, then you're looking down on, on someone. You say, oh, you cannot handle this. or yeah. and They can very well handle this. And, and um, But sometimes you have to change your messaging or, or, or make it. I have learned also to be more direct in my communication and not use a lot of words. Just say... <laughs> Because they're, yeah, my colleagues would say, just tell me what you want to say. And yeah. because all the, the, you know, the blurry things around it, it, it just make it difficult to understand. Mm. So we have learned, I think, to be very honest and direct to each other, but in a respectful manner. Yeah. And they are also very direct towards me. And, um, you know, if it would be a very hierarchical, how do you say, hierarchical yeah. company? <laughs> yeah. yeah, hierarchical structure. Yeah, yeah then <laughs> this would probably not work. Yeah. But in our situation, you know, we, we, we can be very direct. And I believe that being direct and honest to each mm. other uh, brings forward um, yeah, what you really want to achieve together. Yeah. yeah. And the, the, the cool thing about that for me is that 
you're learning, but they're also learning, right? It's it's both, both yeah. ways. Yeah, uh, and in, and there is an interdependence. Yeah. So I depend on them to be exactly. to be successful as for me as a as an owner of the company, but to, for the company to be successful. Yeah, and they depend on me to create the surroundings for them to grow and be so successful. Yeah, that that that's cool because that that's what sometimes is missing in just normal companies, right? If I can call it normal, it's a normal company like yeah. any other. But yeah. y- you know what I mean? It's it's. Uh, and that directness is also something that I sometimes miss, right? Yeah. So if it is something, say it like it is, right? And yeah. people will understand it better than you're kind of turning around the whole issue and not uh, selling, saying what you want to say. Sure. Yeah. So w- what what's uh, interesting to me, so you have a very personal mission to do this. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I would like to talk a little bit about that. Mm. Uh, I've s- seen your TED talk, which is amazing. It's in Dutch, but it's uh, it's amazing. Yeah. Um, so you got diagnosed with MS yes. uh, a few years uh, before. Uh, and... Um, what um how how was that how how was that period for you like and uh, uh, how did that spark this whole uh, this whole thing that you were doing right now yeah so i was di- diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in 2010 mm-hmm. um and this was of course you know very difficult periods in my life of course uh, because i didn't know what ms was um, a lot of people don't uh, no, yeah. and uh, the only thing I knew was that my grandmother had MS and that she was in a wheelchair, and that was the only image that I had of MS. And I eventually find out, found out that uh, it's a disease of the central nerve system, your brain and your spinal cord, um, and it, it, it can have all these different outcomes, you know, um, but... Yeah, for one person, it's impossible uh, to get out of bed, and the other person is still able to run a marathon. Mm. Uh, but a lot of the problems that exist in the central nerve ex- uh, system uh, is that you you know you have problems with feeling or seeing or controlling uh, your arms or legs, mm. um, and there's no cure. Uh, there are there is a lot of medication, but there is no cure available. So but that's more for uh, suppressing, right? Yeah, yeah, and there's no prediction possible to say what it will be like for you in the Mm. coming years so there's a lot of uncertainty around the whole disease and especially for me in the beginning it was you know very difficult to to think about it and um and to know what my future would look like yeah and um it took some time for me to to accept and to understand uh that i have this disease and it's not going to change probably um but eventually I decided that I didn't want to change my, or, you know, I did, I did want to change my life, but I didn't want to, you know, um, commit to things that would, could pob- possibly happen in the, in the future because, uh, you know, you can look at MS and if you Google, you know, the doctor told me don't Google uh, because you will find, the first, <laughs> You'll find it, yeah. yeah, the first thing you <laughs> but do. That's with is every you, disease. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So the first thing I did was start Googling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but uh, then you, of course, only find the the difficult stories mm. and, and and not the good stories. Um, but I decided I don't I don't want to wait for things that might happen and just um, uh, want to make the the best out of it and, yeah. and see the most out of it. And this took quite some time and probably a couple of years. Uh, but I decided, okay, I'm not going to wait and I'm going to do the things in life that I find really important. Yeah. And how was it affecting you uh, at the time, right? So uh, when you didn't know, uh, yeah. h- how was it affecting you? What, what kind of things? Yeah, so uh, I had all these uh, this numbness in my legs, in mm-hmm. my chest, uh, my hands, these tingling feelings. Um, I had all these uh, red and blue spots in my vision, in my right eye, uh, and all these th- you know, were, uh, neurological problems that I couldn't you know understand what it was about so you know when i then i eventually ended up with the doctor and the neurologist and he said well there are three possibilities you have lyme disease or you have ms or you have a strangulated nerve somewhere in your neck mm. uh, i thought it was a strangulated nerve but eventually ended up being ms um yeah so that, that was really really difficult period um, yeah but as said you know um i'm still lucky because in in these almost 10 years nine ten years i've had a, a lot of neurological problems but i've still been able to work and do everything and yeah. uh everything i want to achieve in life and 
I don't know what my future will look like, but as long as you know my body permits, yeah. I'm gonna try and, and do the things that I enjoy and that I find really important. And and then also, you know, looking back at at um, at, at that time, I didn't want to change. Uh, the first thing reaction is I didn't want to have the stamp on my forehead of being an MS patient. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I didn't want Understand anything that. to change. I just wanted my career to be successful. I wanted my personal life to not change. But eventually everything changed. And, yeah. Uh, and I think now, thanks to MS, a lot of things uh, changed in a positive sense. So I changed jobs, started yeah. a foundation to um, together with friends. Yeah, for uh, research and stuff like that, right? Yeah, to yeah. find uh, or to, to raise funds for uh, for research in MS. So we mm. kick-started one of the major projects in uh in uh, one of the the best MS centers in the world, in uh, based in Amsterdam, yeah, and so a lot of things changed, and in a good sense, yeah, you know, that, yeah. Uh, yeah. I've read uh, read a little bit about it. Uh, it uh, some some things that that spring to mind are like uh, I don't know if it's really uh, confirmed, but they say that uh, it is frequent more frequent in like colder countries and stuff like that mm. uh so th in that sense uh, of course you had the experience with your grandmother yeah. uh but uh what what what's uh, more interesting to me is that for example you you started this company or actually you uh, uh started together with the with a partner yeah um what's interesting to me there is that uh it, it kind of because the banking world is not a social world in that sense, right? <laughs> it's very, very, very social. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 but that, uh, how, how did that, how did that idea spark then? Like, uh, is it because you were in that position that you said, okay, I want to change something for other people as well? Maybe not in the same thing, but... Uh, yeah. uh, so this took a couple of years and... Mm. Um, and I, I knew my business partner uh, because he started this company five years before yeah. I joined. Yeah. And I think through the years, I started to think about w what is it that I really find important in life. Yeah, exactly. And I didn't have this clear definition, to be really honest. But I knew I want to become an entrepreneur and I, I knew that I wanted to create more impact on the lives of other people. Was that before or was that after? That was after after, uh, after yeah, the yeah. Uh, diagnosis, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but this was not like a light switch that just switched on and said, "Oh, this is what I want to do." You <laughs> yeah, know, it was course. like a light bulb <laughs> above your head. This is, oh yeah. yeah. This just e evolved, and I met people, talked about people, and then eventually I was talking to Paul, my business partner, and then I, at that time I thought, "This is what I want to do." It I really yeah, so I didn't have anything. I didn't know anything about autism, whatever. But I really connected to. You know the the adversities that a lot of people with autism experience through their life, and the adversity that I had experienced diagnosis MS, mm. um, and to see that you can change that into something positive. I wanted to show people with autism that you can also change, you know, the the whole way that people think about autism uh, yeah. into something positive. That so if you put people uh, in a special position and you tell them, okay, you have autism. Uh, this is not a bad thing. This is a good thing. Mm. It's uh, because you're better at certain things than other people, and we're going to show that. And this does something very strong with people. You know, this, if, if you look at it that way, people don't. You know, they're not an autist. They are someone with autism. But most of all, they're you know they're the best data analyst, or exactly. they're the best editor for creating great content online you're moving and, that label right yeah but you, not totally because you're also saying it's because of autism. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, we yeah. also use it and and and, and this is a very uh thin line but it's very important because mm. we had this discussion uh, in the beginning when we started branding our company that way um and we first of all say said okay this is uh this person and um he or she is autistic and uh, also a data analyst. And but the, my colleague said, no, that's not that's the wrong way around. And then we changed it. They said, okay, this is this person. He or she is data analyst mm. and has autism. Exactly. Um, but then so then it's clear why they're a good analyst. Yeah. But it's not that they're the autist. They're the data analyst, and they're very good at the job because of and. 
and this is the way you know that that feels very strong and then i feel very strong about it because i'm an ms patient but i also feel that because of that i've been able to do a lot of things and to share my story and but it also sparked something within me mm. to do all these things i'd never done before and me maybe even i didn't even dare to do yeah um you know, if I didn't have MS, I'd probably not become an entrepreneur and, and join this company and, and start to, to grow this company. Yeah, and one, one other thing uh, where, while you were talking about that uh, comes to mind, of course, uh, you've climbed the biggest mountain in the world. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's also no small feat for anyone, but <laughs> no. it's, it's, even, it's even more for you, of course. Uh, mm. uh, how did that go? How do, you, how do you get to that idea to do, even do that? Yeah, that's a crazy, uh, crazy one. Um, yeah, so in 2016, I was the first male MS patient to, to climb Everest. <laughs> and in 2011, it started off with a group of friends uh, climbing uh, Kilimanjaro in, uh, in Africa. And a good friend of mine, Ninka, um, she turned 40 that year. Or that year and, uh, and, you know, she just sent out a message to, to her friends that said, who's joining me to climb Kilimanjaro because I want to do this before I turn, turn 40. Seems like a cool thing to achieve. <laughs> and my wife and I said, well, okay, well let's, Why not? Yeah, let's join. And, um, yeah. And, uh, and the year before, I was diagnosed with MS, and my friend said, okay, well, let's uh, do something with climbing and, and you know, see if we can change mm -hmm. it into a fundraiser. And we Create start, awareness as, exactly, as well. Exactly, create yeah. awareness for yeah. MS, uh, raise funds for research. And, and this was my first experience with fundraising and also with climbing. And and after that, it you know got out of hand because uh, <laughs> I had to, you know I, I really liked the the climbing experience. Eventually, I found out that climbing you know Majari is very interesting and challenging, but it's, it's nothing to do with uh, alpinism. Actual climbing, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, but it sparked something, and I started to think about okay, what else can I achieve? Mm. And then I put a message on Facebook. I said, okay, who's joining me to uh, to climb Everest next year? Which was totally crazy because <laughs> I I had no experience at all. So it, and it was impossible. But then I talked to a lot of people and started training, doing other mountains. You know, gaining all the experience that I needed. Uh, a lot of physical training, uh, exercising, doing a lot of expeditions. Ending up three years hard work training, going to uh, to Nepal, mm. and yeah, and ending up being very lucky to to you know to have the right conditions, and also lucky to uh, to be able to do it physically. Yeah, and end up on the on the roof of the world. You know? Crazy. Yeah. Uh, that, what, what's what's uh, what I wanted to ask is uh, how did that did uh, having MS affect you in some way while you were doing the the whole climb? Uh, luckily, during the climb, I wasn't affected by, uh, yeah. by MS, but yeah. this was, of course, something that I was worried about uh, course, yeah. beforehand. And uh, I talked to my neurologist and saying, am I taking a too big risk or not? <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, of uh, course. and he said, well, you're, of course, crazy that you're doing this. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, everybody's crazy yeah. for doing it. <laughs> but he said, you know, looking at the MS, uh, there's no reason why you shouldn't do it. Yeah. And I had a problem. A, we, a month before I left, I couldn't feel my feet anymore because mm. I had this neuro uh, neurological problem in my feet. Yeah. And, and that was a big challenge because it's, it's very difficult if you don't feel your feet and you're yeah, standing in, uh, in the snow and you yeah. don't know if they're frozen or that it's a neurological problem. And eventually, uh, it, you know, I was lucky that within w one and a half months, you know, the feeling got back and I was able to climb. Uh, so... Uh, I wasn't hindered by, no. by the MS, uh, luckily, but it could have happened. And, uh, yeah, because of the conditions, right? So sure. uh, it's a lot colder, altitude, yeah. everything like that. Yeah. So um, my, my main question about this is, how did it feel standing at the top? <laughs> 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 Everybody wants to know that, I think. But. Yeah, 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 of course, yeah. Yeah. And it, yeah, it was a crazy feeling, of course, but you have to realize I was climbing already for a couple of days and the last stint to the summit is mm. about 12 hours uh you're totally dehydrated <laughs> tired um uh, cold <laughs> very cold uh of course I, I was happy and if i look back at the pictures uh i see that I'm very happy i called my wife using uh, the sat phone uh, which was in but I, 
to be honest, I can't remember everything from it because during uh, of the, because of the lack of oxygen, um, mm. uh, you know, your brain functions differently, and and you still have to go back because you, when you reach the summit, you know that you still have to. The hard part <laughs> is still to come. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. just halfway. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it was an amazing experience just seeing the world from that perspective and the mountains. And there's nothing higher from everywhere you look everything is lower Crazy. um and the the whole environment is so impressive mm. um but you know the real feeling of of pride and of sense of achievement this actually comes when you're back mm. um and for me it was not standing on the summit it was actually after and also the whole process towards towards the summit you know yeah. all the people that i met uh, training and the training and so eventually i found out it's not about reaching the summit uh of course this this goal you need this goal to go somewhere and to to be traveling but eventually the whole journey uh, towards it was far more interesting because i met so many people and i did all this new things that i'd never done before gained a lot of knowledge gained a lot of experience and yeah, crazy yeah yeah it's 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 so so surreal for me of course because i don't have any climbing experience <laughs> <laughs> climbing a hill is like the top of yeah. what i'm going to do right now but <laughs> yeah. uh but uh what i wanted to ask that so there's just two more questions that i yeah. wanted to to go into so uh, getting back to swing uh what do you think uh the future will bring so what, what do you see it evolving into so i think that we're looking at a very bright future uh as a company but also for people with autism mm. um there are, th are a couple of trends that i see is that um there we're gaining a lot more knowledge about autism and about the unique talents so i see a lot of people you know, that know something about autism and they're not all looking negative anymore so yeah. the, it's changing very brief or very uh how do you say that it's very slowly mm. um but you know the the way people look at autism is is changing so this is one positive trend for for us but also for people with autism i see that companies um are evolving uh, in their corporate social responsibility um practices uh, um, and so f some of them are still you know in, in the beginning but are a lot of companies that are changing their policies and want to employ broader uh, group of people yeah um and next to that i see that uh, there are a lot of young people that find it important to work at companies that have a clear purpose and that are not only working for shareholders but for all stakeholders for employees and also with people distance to the labor market yeah um uh, currently the economy in holland and in europe is, is going very well so th this also helps yeah. um and there's a very uh, the, the, summer, the, uh, the overall uh, unemployment rate in Holland is very low. Mm. Uh, so this means that there is a lot of uh, search for for talent for for new sure. people, employees. So this also helps, especially in the spaces where, that you are in, of course. Yeah. yeah. So in data analytics, online marketing, you know, there everybody's looking for people. Yeah. Um, so overall, these trends are are very good. Um, I think. Uh, as I said in the beginning, uh, Swink is not going to change the world alone. So we need the help of a lot of people that want to do business with us, that want to learn from us, um, and who we can learn together with uh, to make sure that a lot of uh, people with autism that are unemployed are going to be uh, employed in the future and that they can use their talents and to, you know, if, if companies become more inclusive and start to understand what these unique talents is and how they can unleash the these powers um then i think there 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 is a very bright future i th i look at our company and i know it's crazy to say this probably as an owner of the company but as a, like a rough diamond you know and that yeah, has to be polished yeah. and there's something very unique that we possess and that i would love to share with uh, a lot of other people and uh, with other companies uh from a commercial perspective but especially from a social perspective because yeah. there's so much more that we can achieve uh, so much more that um, you know we can achieve together 
Yeah. Uh, so I look at uh, very positive at, at the future. Yeah, of course. And I think we can increase our impact together. Mm. Um, yeah. This is also one of the, the reasons why I called you, of course, on the podcast uh, through Jeroen, which was also uh, from Funding Circle that was also on the podcast. Yeah. He, he mentioned it to me and I was like, yeah, this sounds like a real story that I want to, to, to tell or actually you uh, should tell, but yeah. uh, I can share with the, the listeners, of course. Yeah, and he's also a very strong believer in, in, you yeah, know, for in, sure. uh, for, in what we do, but in, also in a broader sense yeah. and how we can create more impact together and... And funding Circle is one of our clients as well because they believe in the, in the strength uh, and they're a very commercial company. For the data analytics part, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because they do a lot of data analytics, I know. But, uh, but uh, I have one more question to wrap up. Shoot. What are you most proud of since all of this? <laughs> um hardest question ever yeah and i i saw the question beforehand yeah. and i uh, decided not to think about it uh, so but what pops into mind is probably what i'm most proud of this is that i've learned so much about myself and uh and became hopefully uh a better person and i've l- learned a lot and still learning a lot every day and challenging myself but i've come so much closer to to myself to what i th- know is important and then um and also you know being uh daring also to to talk about that and to to go for the things that you really find are important so that's next to all the achievements you know mount everest and growing the company and being an entrepreneur so i'm very proud of that of course but eventually i think what i'm most proud of is just to to have become who i was probably already but yeah now, yeah, yeah you're grown as a person in yeah. that sense yeah and i must say for me it's a real example uh I, I love i love people that uh that give back in ways that you're doing right now and uh that's also uh, one of the main reasons why i think this podcast is amazing for uh, a lot of people just to hear these kinds of stories um so to wrap up uh your uh how can people find you on the internet very easy uh swink dot uh, so yeah. s s w i n k dot n l yeah. exactly yeah <laughs> Uh, thank you again for being here. Thank you. Uh, for, thank you for this great podcast. Yeah. Because uh, you're really sharing uh, a lot of these different stories and we need to Thanks. share more and more. So keep Yeah, I, I, for sure. I, I, I love these kinds of stories. So, um, And of course, for the listeners, uh, you can find the Bits vs. Byte podcast on uh, bitsvsbytes.com and all major podcasting platforms. And of course, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. It's all Bits vs. Bytes. I'd like to thank you for listening and until next time.